Hello, and welcome to the first of our two-part webinar series entitled AD Consolidation Through Virtualization, Part 1, Authentication and Single Sign-On. My name is Kim Locke. I'm with Radiant Logic, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that your lines will be muted for the duration of the webinar. However, if you have a question, you may enter it in the GoToWebinar window, and we will have a Q&A session at the end if time allows. If we are un not able to get to your question during the webcast, we'll send a personal email to follow up. Also, this webcast will be recorded and sent out along with a copy of the presentation slides within the next 24 hours. Our speaker today is Wade Ellery, Senior Solutions Architect at Radiant Logic. Wade has extensive experience in enterprise IT direct and channel software and services sales and management. He has in-depth knowledge and experience in enterprise IAM, IAG, risk and compliance, and IT security challenges. Over to you, Wade. Excellent. Thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of a chorus. If everyone can sing along, the uh, words are right there on the slide. How Radiant One virtualization gives you the benefits of AD consolidation without disrupting your existing identity infrastructure. As someone said earlier, it just rolls right off your tongue. But that's a mouthful to have as a title, but it does really cover the ground that we're trying to get over today and give you some ideas on how Radiant One can really have an impact in your AD consolidation uh, efforts and also potentially allow you to get the benefits of AD consolidation with a lot less of the heavy lifting. Our focus today is going to be on consolidation through virtualization part one and authentication and single sign-on as the drivers behind that process. So the question may start out, why do we need to consolidate Active Directory in the first place? And part of it comes from an understanding of really how Active Directory evolved. Active Directory started decades ago. In fact, I was actually there at the first release of Windows NT uh, in San Francisco, uh, I think back in 95 or 96. Um, that solution was built around the concept of authenticating a user's computers to a domain or to a directory. But the challenge back then was that we did not have very fast connections between uh, geographically dispersed environments. New York and San Francisco had a very expensive and very low bandwidth connection over a wide area network. And so a authentication of a user to a domain was difficult if the user was in San Francisco and the domain was in New York the time it took to transit across the country and come back, checking IDs and passwords was really onerous and literally could take 15, 20 minutes in some scenarios. So to deal with that, Microsoft came up with a distributed model that said, let's put a local copy of a domain in each of the locations that I want to uh, be able to authenticate and authorize users access using my domain or AD credentials. And that worked well uh, in that model for getting access to printers and file shares and local resources on my network. But the challenge started to develop as applications started to leverage Active Directory as an authentication model, whether or not those applications might be hosted locally or whether they might be hosted in another environment across the WAN. And also challenges with multiple domains because of the replication and the synchronization of uh, servers within that AD domain, if you had a large environment, you were suggested that you break it up into smaller functional pieces. You may have a, a research domain, a development domain, uh, a sales domain, or you may have an east to west and a central domain in your environment, or a US or a European domain, so that those environments could operate more autonomously and the amount of traffic sent around between all the servers to keep everyone in sync was less. You only transited between domains when it was necessary although most of your work could be done internally. But that itself started to create problems because now you had applications that were designed with the idea that all the users would be in one domain or one place to go get all my identity information. So that application now had to be stood up in multiple environments to support multiple separate domains. And that began to multiply the challenge of supporting a multi-domain model. And then through mergers and acquisitions and, and uh, organic growth, more and more domains got added in, and as organizations struggled to try and collapse or consolidate those domains into a simpler model, they realized that there were a lot of inherent challenges with simplifying a multi-domain structure. 
domains aren't necessarily uh, exact copies of each other because one domain can decide to extend its schema or modify its, its structure or, or be built in a different uh, hierarchical model than another domain, even in the same organization. So simply pushing them together doesn't solve the problem. And then you've got the challenge of identity uniqueness. Within a domain, you cannot have a duplicate ID. When you go to provision a user, if their ID you've chosen for them in that domain, their uh, SAM account name already exists, it's not gonna let you create a second user with the same account name because that inherently would cause conflicts with authentication, authorization, really access and any value to that identity itself if it belonged to multiple people. But across domains, that same policy does not necessarily apply. So I can have a jsmith in my sanfrancisco.com domain and a jsmith in my newyork.com domain. And although they can operate independently in those two domains, if I try to merge them together, I can't have the same jsmith uh, represented by two, representing two different people. So I've got some inherent challenges with bringing all that information together. Now, why do companies want to move towards a consolidated domain uh, model and a, and a directory model? Well, there's a number of things they're looking at. One is improved security. It is a much larger challenge to secure and audit and apply compliance across a multiple domain model. You're basically replicating the same work over and over again. So if you have two domains, it's twice the work. If you have three domains, it's three times. And you can see how this becomes an exponential challenge if you're in an organization with nine domains. Or as some states that we've worked with where every department in the state has its own domain, you may have 32 domains. That is a massive challenge to apply a security model to, especially with all the variations in each domain. So it makes management very difficult. Collapsing down to a single domain or, or Reducing the number of domains simplifies management. It reduces cost of overhead. Uh, you're avoiding maintenance support, licensing costs, duplicate identities, multiple servers running with the same function that don't give you any additional uh, scale. And then there's regulatory compliance that falls back on top of that. All of the other auditing level requirements that come with uh, identity infrastructure, again, are multiplied when you have multiple domains. It's simplified as you bring things together. And then one of the biggest drivers that we've seen for, for domain consolidation has been the desire or the push or the pull to bring users out of your on-premise terrestrial Active Directory environments and up into the Microsoft Azure world in order to gain access primarily to Office 365. Microsoft has done a very good job of shifting the focus of their software uh, environment from on-premise licensed, uh, perpetual licensed office products, which were the, the core, along with the desktop operating system, of Microsoft's revenue generating model. That's where Microsoft made all of its money. That's where it has the biggest footprint, is in Microsoft Office desktop applications, desktop operating systems. Now, in a move to the cloud and an understanding that they have to be able to compete in both the cloud environment and because they've restructured now, they're much more nimble, much more uh, agile, and uh, have a much more flexible sales and cost model in the cloud. They wanna migrate all of the constituents they have on premise up into the cloud as quickly as possible. The more they have in the cloud, the more that cloud infrastructure that they've invested billions of dollars in, the more it benefits uh, them and the more the utilization they can get from that particular platform. So there's a giant drive to move towards the cloud. But if you think about it, the cloud is in itself a consolidated AD environment. It is one tenant or one domain that you have in the cloud for your whole organization. So if your organization is made up of multiple domains and forests and you want to bring that into Azure, you don't want to set up a tenant in Azure for every one of your AD domains. That would be counter to their model of simplifying and, and centralizing your identity infrastructure, Microsoft's gonna ask you to collapse everything down to one domain, one AD structure, and then bring that up into the cloud, make life simpler all the way around. So there's a number of really powerful drivers there, and it's really a wave that's coming along today that is, is one you can't easily resist. I don't think that many organizations over the next three to five years will not have a, a Microsoft Azure presence somewhere that they will be running their majority of their office products off of Office 365 
potentially uh, email online with Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, all the functions that Microsoft's making available in the cloud will be the primary source for that information. And you may even see a scenario where Microsoft's updates and feature enhancements happen first in the cloud and the drive to be there and to have those is even stronger. So what is the challenge then behind that? Why don't I just go ahead and pull everything together and, and bring my environment up into the cloud and then the problem solved, I go along and focus on my business again and don't really have to worry about IT and, and all the issues that keep coming up in that area. Well, it's not really that easy. And if you look at the way AD really came about and how it was developed, it, it's based on a complexity that happens with medium to large size environments that either have grown and segregated their environments into multiple domains based on uh, original design and architectures that worked 5, 10, 15 years ago, or they've acquired multiple domains and are uh, forests based on mergers and acquisitions and, and, and other companies coming together. But those haven't been consolidated, as we'll, as we'll talk about shortly. There's some real challenges to doing that. But what's happened now is I've got layers of applications internal in my environment, on-premise terrestrial applications that leverage those domains that have had to point to potentially multiple domains that have been configured to interact with those domains and to understand how the user is represented in those domains, how the structure of that domain, the hierarchy, the OU, and, and the group structure in that domain is set up so that the application understands how to query that information or the application may even have a dependency needing that particular hierarchy, that structure, or that schema that may have been extended with additional attributes in order to function. So I've created a dependency here between my applications and my domain model. So not only is it difficult to just bring all the domains together based on structure, but now I have a layer of, of interdependency with other applications. So as I move one piece, other pieces in my organization are affected. So to simplify that application side, what's been done in the industry is we've moved towards the concept of a single sign-on. We've tried to address the user's anxiety of I've got too many IDs, too many passwords, too many domain credentials, I can't log in to all the applications I need with one ID and one password. I'm going to the cloud now for SaaS applications. That's a challenge now. I've got more IDs to understand. Things are not synchronized. I changed my password and it doesn't apply everywhere. That wave of frustration has driven the industry to try and solve that problem because where we are driven to solve problems is in two areas. One, when it affects the end user, whether it's employees or C-level executives or customers, when there is somebody at the end that has power, that affects business, that affects revenue, that affects the business, that affects what IT does. And the end user has power and that frustration is driven a need for single sign-on. In addition to that, there's been a need for us to be able to simplify the environment and be able to use a simpler set of credentials so that for an auditing and compliance basis now, I have less, uh, com less directories to manage, I have less uh, attributes to, to control, and I have the ability to, to now audit that information more clearly. Who has access to what becomes a much more challenging uh, issue when you have a much more distributed environment. So on the single slide on, we've built applications for both on-premise and cloud applications to provide what now for the end user appears to be almost a seamless experience. But if you look behind the identity provider, and that may be any one of the major vendors that has an access management solution, and you undoubtedly have one or two or five in your environment, depending on how you have grown up and, and what you've acquired and what you've tried. Um, we've talked to customers and we usually t ask them what do they have for their access management solution. They say, well, we have one of everything, and that's not unusual. <clears throat> but whatever that MNA provider is doing, provi to provide the user with that seamless experience, it's still facing the challenge on the back end of all the sources of identity, the multiple AD domains, and potentially other applications or other sources of identity information that need to be consumed in order to provide the information to authenticate and authorize those users. So when you've consolidated your Active Directory environment, you can use that to feed the uh, application requirements. But again, those enterprise applications and potentially cloud applications could potentially have a dependency on some of that initial uh, domain structure. There may be an extended schema in one of the domains that has attributes that are needed to make authorization decisions. There may be a group hierarchy in one domain that's, that's being leveraged by a particular application. So when you consolidate Active Directory, 
much like the challenges in the uh, 2000s of trying to build a meta directory, let's build one big directory where all of our information is stored. We have everything in one place. All our applications can point to one location, solves all of our problems. We quickly find out that each application owner has their own view of what the world should look like. They have their own desire for a schema, a protocol that they want to talk, whether it's LDAP or it's AD or it's a database protocol they're trying to look for. Now a REST interface is what they're looking for. On top of that, there's structure and schema requirements so that what we end up doing is, is having this series of meetings where everybody brings their uh, desires to the table and gives up most of them for a compromise that everyone tries to live with. And shortly after that compromise is agreed to, people leave the meeting saying, forget it, I'm going to go ahead and stand at my own, this won't work for me anyway, or I'm going to have to spend a tremendous amount of my budget now re-engineering my applications to try and fit into this new uh, compromise structure. Well, in consolidating Active Directory, you have many of the same challenges. If you've extended your, your uh, schema for a particular application, are you going to want to now extend that schema in your consolidated AD environment? If you've got one domain that's a flat structure because my uh, <clears throat> cloud access management solution needs to see everyone on a flat level because one of my applications couldn't do a subtree query, um, I got to flatten everything because I have another application that's really necessary to be able to see a, a hierarchy based on region, function, department, and owner before it can give access to applications. So you can, can't just put those square pegs in that round hole. And then on top of that, migrating the users off of those systems into a consolidated AD domain is itself a challenge. There's a lot of work to be done to pick those users up, to move them into that system, to manage your environment while you have uh, users in both the legacy uh, AD environment and the new consolidated AD environment, pointing applications to the right place, recognizing when someone's been moved, being able to move them back when something doesn't work, and again, synchronizing passwords and access for that whole process of, of moving users over to that new environment. So you really have to sort of take a look at the cost and the effort involved in this type of process and see if there's possibly a better way to handle this particular challenge. And this is not a, a, my, a minimal cost to do this. On the average, most of the consulting companies that we work with come back to say a multi-domain forest, multi-domain, multi-forest consolidation um, it's about a million dollars uh, for every other domain and about a year for every other domain. And it's not unusual to talk to customers that have been at this project for two and three and four years, potentially through a lot of mergers and acquisitions they've tried to consolidate, and still have applications that are mission critical that are tied to old domain structures they can't sunset. There's still users hanging around with two sets of credentials. And the challenge of overlapping identities and the same user in both domains and not wanting users to have a different experience can be very daunting and, and can stifle that attempt where management will just come down and say, hey, just don't worry about it. Stop. Let's just live in the old world because the uh, difficulty and the cost of consolidation is so high. And that doesn't even address the non-AD resources. You potentially have a number of other uh, sources of identity information, databases, directories, especially as you move into the customer identity management space, that also need to be brought into this environment and need to be integrated with. But with like a single consolidated AD, it doesn't give you any real easy tools for bringing in other sources of identity information. Microsoft built AD around their own concept of, of security and Kerberos, authentication, authorization, structure, group policy. Those are all proprietary Microsoft concepts that don't exist in other sources and, and can't easily be uh, mimicked or uh, adapted to look like something else. So there's inherent challenges in that whole process. So after all this doom and gloom and painting up this world of, of pain and woe as you try and consolidate your Active Directory, because I can, I can hear you saying, but no, I have to. I've, I've got an initiative to move to Azure Office 365 and this is my only path forward or I'm suffering under multiple AD domain structures from mergers and acquisitions and I'm being told by management my budget's going to be cut because I'm spending too much money maintaining multiple environments. I have to have a solution. Don't worry. There is a solution and it's with Radiant Logic. And it's with Radiant Logic because we actually have the capability of overcoming some of the major challenges and roadblocks that I just pointed out. 
And we have the capability of overcoming those challenges and those roadblocks because Radiologic's Federated Identity Service is a combination of two powerful technologies. If you look at the, the graphic there in the middle of the screen, we're actually acting as a hub. We're acting as a consolidation of identity information coming from all of your multiple domains and making that available as a single point to all the access management and application and cloud applications and provisioning and auditing solutions that need to consume that identity. And we make that information available to them at a single point. But because of that really powerful blue logic engine sphere around our golden pyramid, we're able to represent this identity information regardless of source, represent it in multiple views, in multiple different endpoints that the application can query that will give it back exactly the structure, the protocol, LDAP, REST, web services, look like an AD environment schema, look like a LDAP environment schema, transform a database into a different schema structure. However that application needs to see that information in whatever constituency, whatever subset of users, I only want to see people who work in the partner uh, environment get access to the partner application. So my partner directory and my AD users that are in the department that manages partners are the only ones that are exposed in this particular view. I can build and filter these views to provide exactly what the application needs as narrowly defined as necessary and exactly in the protocol in the structure that's required. And I can do this simultaneously over and over again for each of the endpoints, for each of the access management solutions, for each of the applications, for each of the cloud provisioning connectors, for each of the different consumers of identity information that I need, I can provide exactly what they need without affecting or sacrificing the other applications requirements or needs. And I can do this based on an agnostic view of the sources of identity. We like to say we're platform agnostic and standards based. If your source of identity, AD forests and domains, or potentially databases or directories, or web applications, or SaaS applications, or other external directories coming from partners and vendors, if they're standards-based, if we can access it through a standard protocol, we can gather that information together, we can correlate it and disambiguate it, that means match up users with the same person across multiple systems, we can make sure that the same identity in multiple systems as different people don't get brought together inadvertently and bring that information forward and then let you decide exactly how you want that information formatted and structured and provided to those applications. And this is a powerful, powerful tool for the migration of Active Directory because it addresses the challenge of, well, wait a minute, I have my new federated access uh, management layer that wants all my AD information in one big flat list but I have this enterprise application that's still looking for my AD users as an LDAP query uh, as a hierarchical structure. Hey, I've got this application that's going to look for both my AD user information and additional data from my security database, so I've got to extend the schema. I can address all those challenges simultaneously in Radiant 1, leaving your AD environments in their native form, their native schema, their native structure, and still use that information and make it available in multiple different ways to whatever the application needs. Now, I've alleviated that challenge of my applications and my provisioning to the cloud and all my other requirements being dependent on me physically collapsing my AD environment. I have a virtual collapsed AD environment, a single AD model, again, formatted and structured as I need it. And now I have all the time in the world to start moving my users on the back end, to start migrating my users from one domain to another, to start building a consolidated domain. And as we go through, we'll see how Radiant Logic can help in that process also. So there is hope. There is a tremendous amount of power and flexibility here to deliver on that challenge. And with Radiant Logic, you can do this without an impact to the business. We have customers that have gone through major mergers and acquisitions of, of Fortune 50 companies in the middle of financial crises actually coming together and acting as one conglomerate, as one unified enterprise in a matter of weeks because in the middle of the financial crisis, there was no time to take two years to merge these companies together. 
and be able to do that using radiant logic so that one entity looked like the other entity to its applications. The people in bank A appeared to be from bank B when they were accessing bank B applications. So bank B applications let them right in, even though the bank A structure and schema and, and the uh, setup and domain was completely alien to the bank B applications and vice versa. Bank B users could appear to be bank A users to access bank A applications. So immediately everyone is working cross system, cross platform. While the physical structure had not changed, now we bought all the time they needed to breathe and solve that problem. So how do you go about doing this? Well, once you've brought Radiant Logic in and you've, you've built this consolidated view of your environment and you're feeding that to your applications, now you can start thinking about, okay, how am I going to bring all this information into a consolidated AD environment? If I'm going to collapse it down to a physical environment, if I'm going to physically migrate everybody, if I'm going to try and shut down my back ends at some point, how do I go about doing that? And the key first step in any project is to know where you are. You can't plan a trip to go someplace unless you know where you're starting. If you go into your iPhone or your Android phone, you bring up Google Maps, and you put in a destination, but you don't let it know where you are, then it has no way to give you directions. So we're going to inventory everything in your existing environment. And Radiant Logic is a really powerful tool for inventorying your existing environment because we have the ability to actually look into the applications to when we connect to them, mount them in our solution and let you see the different hierarchies and structures within there, see the different organizational models, the groups, the extended schema, how those different environments actually appear, what's common between them, what is um, out of sync between them, how you may start uh, building the solution you want to see based on the building blocks you have to start with. And this isn't just for AD domains, it can also encompass other LDAP directories like legacy Sun application or directories that need to be sunset. And we can even bring databases in and build a structure based on the columns in a table being the schema for a directory object. And then any relationship in tables and views and joins can be used as a, to represent that hierarchy if it's needed. So you can now start to incorporate all these into common concepts of organization and be able to start moving forward. But doing that inventory is first connecting to those systems, bringing that information into Radiant Logic, getting it on a single pane of glass, a single sandbox you can start to work with and see and understand what you have. What do you want to let go of? What do you want to keep? What do you have to adapt and model going forward? And then you need to take an inventory of existing client application requests. You want to put Radiant Logic between your applications and your back ends. Initially, we can simply pass through all the traffic so everything flows through Radiant Logic to the back ends as it was doing natively and nothing is disrupted or remodeled. But in that scenario, we can monitor that traffic. We can see what applications are querying what back ends. What queries are they making? Are they looking, doing group lookups? Do I need to be recognizing that the group structure in this particular back end is critical to my migration process because these applications depend on that? I didn't even know that. The guy who built this eight years ago long since left the company. We knew it worked. We didn't really know how. We're going to rip it apart to move it, and we didn't know if we did, we were going to break everything unless we replicated this group structure. So, boy, glad we found that. Let's make sure in the new environment we have that group structure available. But that may not be necessarily easily available because my model going forward may not necessarily easily incorporate that legacy group structure. Then what do I do? Am I going to break that application and go back to the application owner and say, hey, by the way, we have to migrate to a single AD domain and you're a sacrificial lamb. We're going to have to turn your application off because we can't support it in that model. Or am I going to bring in Radiant Logic and say, hey, no worries. Even if we get to a completely unified single AD domain, I can still model that existing domain and users and objects and groups to make them look like the legacy group infrastructure that you had with the same names, the same OU structure, the same user population. And I can represent that to that application as if nothing has changed, even though the physical environment that that application used to contact even no longer even exists in my environment. So I've got some tremendous power here in the way that I model and build this. But key to that is what you'll find in any one of these processes is that you have to go through repetitious efforts to discover, to model, to test, and to refine. 
any development process, and just think about the development of a software application or of a business process or a marketing initiative, you have an initial concept, you prototype it, you put it out and test it, you get back feedback, you adjust it, you tune it, and you prototype it and adjust and put, get back feedback again, you go through that process. But if you're trying to go through that prototyping process by standing up AD domains and migrating users and managing that uh, transactions and then ripping it down and doing it over again, first of all, if you do it in a small pilot or test environment, you're going to have a very limited view of the real impact of what you're doing. You're not hitting real applications. You're not affecting real users on scale. You're not really uh, doing anything that isn't going to, to eliminate all the challenges and bottlenecks you may face when you hit production. And if you do it in production, there's no way in the world you're going to get permission to build up and tear down and build up and tear down multiple AD directories and domain structures based on your attempts to figure out the most efficient model. But with Radiant Logic, it is simply a matter of hours at most with a graphical interface and wizards to build new multiple build simultaneously multiple models to prototype and test and tune. And what if I did this? And oh, I forgot an attribute. Let me add that attribute to the schema and, and store that locally at Radiant Logic so it doesn't affect the back end. And oh, I need to rename this at this uh, field label because the application is expecting first name, not F name. Oh, look, I have a uh, attribute that doesn't exist in any of my back ends that I want to be able to build by concatenating together my domain and my SAM account name to build a, an email address that may not be there. All these capabilities are built into Radiant Logic, so you can start to, to look and see how do I take four different worlds with four different constituencies and four different agendas and bring them into one room and let everybody be heard simultaneously and let everybody get exactly what they want without sacrificing my applications, my business, or my go-to uh, market strategy. And if you think about doing that with people, if you bring 10 people into a room and everybody talks at the same time and everybody has a different agenda, um, you just can't get anything done and no one hears anyone and no one listens after a while and everyone retreats to their corners and, and the whole thing collapses. So you need to have this layer that provides a way for everyone to be heard and everyone to get what they need and everyone to think they're the center of the universe without affecting anyone else at the same time, and that's what Radian Logic provides. Within the tool itself, you have the ability to model and build new structures, new infrastructures, even to build new relationships. You can build hierarchies that say, hey, I've got a customer a set of customer databases that have my salespeople in Active Directory, and I've got my customers in a SQL database, and I've got my orders in a ERP system coming out as a flat file dump, and I've got my products in a product database over here in Oracle, and I want all that to come together so I can build this relationship that says for each salesperson, here's his account. On those accounts, here's the people that he deals with that I get from my partner or my customer LDAP directory, and underneath that, here's all the orders they placed, and here's the products that were in those orders they placed, and I want to be able to search that as a tree and get it back in a single query. Okay, <laughs> see you in three years, you have a million dollars. No, in Radiant Logic, that is really an afternoon of modeling. And if you don't get it right the first time, hey, no harm, no foul. A couple mouse clicks, a couple more uh, saves, and you have a whole different structure to play with. So the capabilities of the product to build this model are, are, are overwhelming. And <clears throat> there's not just a challenge with users. It's not just overlapping user identities. It's not just people with the same ID that uh, are being now consolidated from multiple domains or somebody who had got provisioned in both domains because I had to work in New York and I had to work in San Francisco because of the separation. There was applications I needed to have access to, so I now have two identities and I really hate having to log in with different credentials. I want to bring that together so that whatever I log in with, I get access to all my resources. Those are challenges with the user object. But most applications that do authorization, that provide any kind of granular access to uh, roles and, and uh, attributes or, or functions within that application or uh, resources in a, in a uh, SharePoint environment or any other application are going to control that access through groups, through objects that are in themselves uh, identities, but inside that group is a list of additional identities, the members of that group, the people who by acts, by virtue of being in that group, gain access to resources that are provided or assigned to everyone in that group. 
So instead of assigning resource access individually at a very difficult uh, and highly unscalable model of, of managing that on a user by user basis, I define roles in my organization. Uh, everyone in sales gets access to sales resources. Everyone in marketing gets access to marketing resources. Well, how do I know who they are? I create a sales group and everybody that's in the sales department gets added to the sales group and now they automatically get access to 55 different applications at the right level with the right functionality based on that sales group. Well, when you're consolidating 80 domains, you've got to deal with that group model also. And it has its own challenges because groups may have the same name in two different domains, completely different functions. Domain A's sales group may be something used by the field sales organization to get pricing information that they need to make quotes in the field. And the New York domain sales organization or sales group may actually be a group used by management to do strategy and territory management for their sales organization. And if you push those two together, first of all, the application doing pricing in the field is gonna start seeing users that don't belong there and giving exposing information that shouldn't be exposed. And the people in the group uh, in New York that are expecting to manage territory information uh, may not get the access they need because the, the group is no longer populated properly. So you need to be able to now consolidate groups, remap and rename those groups, and then within the group there's a pointer to each user, but as you consolidate these domains, those pointers change. You need to be able to remap that information. And there's two ways to get information out of a group. An application can call the group and say, hey, who's give me a list of everyone in sales, and you get back a list of 100 or 500 or 1,000 users, and the application spins through that list looking for Jay Smith. And if it finds Jay Smith on that list, it says, hey, Jay Smith, you are a member of the sales group. I just verified that. Go ahead and access the sales resources you're trying to get to. Or it can say, hey, I've got Jay Smith here trying to access some resources. Please give me all the groups that Jay Smith is a member of. And that goes back to Jay Smith's profile and says, give me a list of all the groups that are listed as attributes in your profile as member of, you're a member of that group. So those are two different ways to query the same information, but they require the data to be stored in different places in different ways. One is inside a long list, inside a group object. Another is, is an attribute inside the user object. And again, you're not gonna know or understand exactly how the applications are using and querying for that information until you've done your discovery. And when you've done your discovery, you may find that in one organization, application query sales by group membership, Another, query, another application looks for people to see if they have the sales group in their profile, and if you don't build this model properly and name everything properly and remap everything properly, it's gonna break. And authorization is gonna fail, and people are gonna complain, and help desk calls are gonna go up, and people are gonna have to go back up and try and re-engineer it. Then you're gonna be told to spin things backwards because you need to make this work fast because people are losing access to the ability to do their jobs, and it's a big mess. But again, with Radiant Logic, we can manage all this for you. We have wizards in the product that actually will do all the remapping of the CNs and DNs in order to properly identify these groups. We have tools to allow you to merge groups together or to take hierarchical group structures and graph them together or rebuild new group structures and hierarchies based on consolidated models. All the things you can do with user objects and structure you can do with groups. And we can populate those group user profiles with all the member of information as you can see here on the screen. So this is again addressing a major challenge in this model and especially if you're moving towards Windows uh, Azure AD and you need to populate groups there, you wanna again build that single set of groups, that golden image that you wanna push up into Azure AD, you don't want Azure AD to have conflicts because it's got different groups with the same names with different purposes or different user constituencies in different groups being blended together inadvertently. You wanna be able to do all that ahead of time and clean all that information up and make it available before it's provisioned anywhere. So both from application access and authorization and provisioning into Azure AD or any other endpoint, whether it's Salesforce or uh, Google Cloud or any place else you want to be able to manage both users and groups. Now you, again, as I mentioned before, you can have a challenge of groups with the same names with completely different constituents in it because the group name is the same, but the domain is different. So how do you reconcile that? And all the users in that domain are coming from 
uh, sales domain A users have a domain A uh, CN or, or ID for their members and domain B groups have a domain B member name. You can't put a domain B member name in a consolidated group and expect the application to be able to sort through that or understand that. So Radiant Logic lets you remap all those DNs for each of the users in those groups so that you can actually have the proper pointers in place that you have same name group overlap. Now the other part of this is <clears throat> that you potentially are going to be moving data into a additional layer of storage in addition to your consolidated AD domain, especially if you've got extended AD schemas, if you've got information that is non-native to your AD environment that needs to be made available, if you have database infrastructures that are slow and non-responsive and not necessarily highly available, but that information needs to be included in the profiles that you're building for provisioning to Azure, providing authentication and authorization, or if you've got a scenario where you concatenated and generated complex functions, you've joined or built a union across multiple domains, you've done all that calculation, all that heavy work of sorting out overlapping identities and joining users together and building a rich profile, all that process not only logically takes time and effort to work through and get done right, but it also takes processing overhead, it takes memory, it takes time for the system, for any computer system to do those calculations and generate that result. So you want to be able to store that result in a highly performant platform so it's available at the speed of a directory. The core for Active Directory, its function is authentication and authorization access to resources and security control of that access. So anything that we do in that environment has to be able to perform at the speed of a directory, has to be able to deliver that functionality in a way that the end user is not going to experience discomfort, pain, or frustration waiting for something to happen. To do that, you can't try to do a live join or union of multiple domains at the time of query by a user for authentication because the overhead will take so long the user will never get his response or he'll get frustrated. So what do you do? You store that information in a highly available, very powerful, big data-based directory structure so that information is available at the speed of a directory. But because of the scale and the challenges that you'll see in bringing large environments together, you have to have a, a directory store that overcomes the major drawbacks of a traditional LDAP directory. Traditional LDAP directories have a real problem over three million objects when they start trying to replicate between multiple servers and multiple systems because that replication between the nodes you stand up to provide more throughput starts to compete with the actual queries by the end user for information from each of those nodes or each of those servers. So what Radiant Logic has done is we've tapped into the big data technology of Apache and Hadoop, Lucene and Zookeeper to be able to set up block level replication between the multiple servers in our cluster. So all the data information that needs to be synchronized, all the changes that take place on the back end, all the updates that we're listening for in real time from those back end sources of identity are replicated to every server in the cluster at a block level, which is 100 times faster than doing it through LDAP replication, the normal way of transferring a file between, or an object update between two uh, directory servers. But in addition to being faster, it's in a different channel, a different process. It doesn't compete with the end user's query for information. It doesn't sit in the queue with the user queries and clog things up. So the throughput of the system is remains performant. It's a flat curve of performance from the server giving access to that information. Again, that's critical for maintaining authentication and authorization at the speed of a directory. And again, at a scale that allows you now to build very robust, very large uh, consolidated virtual AD environments with additional attributes coming from databases and other directories from cloud applications and bringing all that information together and pre-calculating those joined and in, in unioned results so that they're available when they're needed. In addition to the block level replication, there's full text indexing. So things like dynamic groups where I can actually say, everybody in Chicago in sales that works in large accounts is in the uh, Chicago large sales account group based on those attributes. 
if a member moves from Chicago to New York, the dynamic group will automatically pull them out of that Chicago group and potentially provision them into the, or add them into the uh, counterpart group in New York. But that's all done automatically based on those attributes changing as the user profile is updated. The problem with dynamic groups is most dynamic groups, most applications can't read dynamic groups. They don't understand how to query and apply a filter to get back that information. So Radiant Logic not only allows you to build that dynamic group based on that information uh, on the attribute values themselves, but we can normalize and clean up those attributes for multiple sources. So if it's Texas in one directory and it's TX in another and it's capital T little x in a third directory, we can make it capital T capital X for all directories. So you can set that filter on, hey, if state equals capital T capital X, then add them to this group. And we can represent that as a member of attribute in the user profile and as what appears to be a static group list to an application querying for a group and store that again at the Radiant Logic level. So this is a really powerful platform for addressing the challenges of scaling in making this highly available and at the same time giving you even more opportunities to build a authorization level structure at the Radiant Logic layer that incorporates information from all of your sources but can be managed centrally. And this is also critical if you're doing a shared services model where you're bringing in identities from outside partners or customers, you want them to manage and be responsible for provisioning and password management and, and deprovisioning their identities, but authorization to access to your applications that you're granting to those external identities, you wanna manage that at your layer. You don't rely on their groups to control what you get access to. You want to have that at your layer. You can do that with Radiant Logic because you can build and, and populate groups at this layer here, independent of the back ends that then apply to the authorization access to applications being served by Radiant Logic. And if you'll notice, there's three servers in this cluster. This is a highly available cluster with technologies similar to what you'd find in a RAID array for hard drives. If one node fails, the other two nodes continue to answer uh, requests and the leader will then rebuild automatically the replacement node while the third node continues to answer requests. So you can lose a full server, get that automatically rebuilt and brought back into the cluster without losing connectivity to the identity information without the user losing the ability to authenticate and authorize it and do the work they need to do. So this value here in being able to consolidate your environment to be able to bring together multiple Active Directory environments and present them as a single AD environment to your applications that consume this information over uh, an LDAP query to be able to make that information available for applications and access management layers and whatever you need to do is one of the powerful benefits of bringing in Radiant Logic. But our mantra is build it once, use it over and over again. There is effort involved in building this consolidation. Now, Radiant Logic has worked for decades now to build into our solution mature tools and wizards and functions and, and graphical interfaces and, and logic that allows you to much more easily accomplish this consolidation and disambiguation of users and, and cleaning up and correlating your data. But once you've done that, you don't want it to have just a single function. Uh, you don't want to do it for a provisioning solution and then all you can do from it is provision from that golden image. You can't do authentication and authorization from that. Or you don't want to do it for reporting and compliance solutions where now you've done all that work of figuring out who everybody is and what they have access to, but only value is to feed your reporting tools and you can't authenticate and authorize from it and you can't provision out of it. So you end up doing it over and over again. Don't do that heavy lifting more than once. Do it once with Radiant Logic. And because we can create multiple views, because we can appear to be whatever an endpoint needs, because we can represent the information in different ways, we can be that source of information that is provisioned to the cloud for Azure AD and AWS. We can be the solution that provisions to other endpoints in your organization, LDAP directories, AD. We can be that source of provisioning uh, image. We can consume your multiple HR feeds and correlate them to a single consolidated view with a normalized set of attributes that your on-premise provisioning tool can then take and run with. So you have tremendous options around that. We can be the source of consolidated single pane of glass that your reporting and compliance applications use to see who has access to what, why do they have it. Give me a full profile on this user and let me understand 
why they have access to these applications. Is it appropriate for them to have domain admin rights given everything else I know about them now that I can see their whole picture? And then the powerful piece is authentication authorization. Let's make more granular, more efficient, more secure decisions about authorizing access. Let's support granular access in more and more applications because we have a full and rich and complete user profile that allows us now to make decisions based on a broader set of data and become much more efficient and much more risk aligned with what we know about the user relative to what access we're granting them. In today's environment, simply a username and a password is not enough to secure your environment. You really need to be able to focus that authorization down to the granular things you know about that user. What department are they in? How long they've been with the organization? Uh, what other groups are they a member of? What applications they have access to? What's their security clearance? All this information needs to be pulled together to make those decisions. And at the same time, we're building that view. We can synchronize that, as I mentioned, into cloud applications. But again, not just your Active Directory consolidated environment. You may have additional identities in other directories, uh, partner directories, customer directories. You may have, as one of our customers, Dev, has a lot of their corporate employees or all their corporate employees in an Active Directory. But their store employees are all sitting in a database. Because their turnover for employees in their stores is so high, they don't want to create AD accounts for them and manage that and go through all the auditing compliance of, of onboarding and offboarding through Active Directory. And they don't need that Active Directory function. They're not authenticating into a desktop and accessing local domain resources. But they do need access to Office 365 and Azure because in SharePoint in the cloud is all the information from HR, including their payroll and their benefits and everything they need to do to register and all the company manuals on proper uh, conduct within the organization are available there so those users have to get access. But how does someone in a database get access to Office 365 resources when Office 365 is looking for a user that came from an Active Directory with Radiant Logic? By bringing those users into Radiant Logics, our federated identity service, we can build what appears to be a profile for that user with the proper attributes and attribute labels and schema to appear to be an AD user, even though that user physically exists in a database, and then provision that, sync that information up into Office 365, be able to have Office 365 authenticate back to Radiant Logic so that the user's password that he was given works when he goes to Office 365 and SharePoint in the cloud to get access to his resources. And all that information is there at a visible layer where auditing and compliance and onboarding and offboarding can be done. Now, you still have to license that Office 365 user. You can't get away with the fact, well, he's not an AD, I don't have to pay for his Office 365 license. Microsoft will ask you to do that because it appears in Azure as a user, but you didn't have to stand up another AD directory, you didn't have to build another environment, you didn't have to set up all the replication and the overhead, you didn't have to break all the applications that already point to that store employee database for point of sale and would not know what to do if it all of a sudden you said everyone's an AD now. Solve all those problems, get all the benefits, realize the result of that for user objects and for groups also. And that model goes on to continue to provide that kind of identity information available, not only to the cloud applications for provisioning, but for authentication, for authorization, to legacy applications also, to web access management, whatever access management layer you're doing, and for synchronizing and provisioning into those applications, that golden image, that consolidated view, exactly the way you want that information consumed and, and provided. And when you start talking about Radiant Logic as a hub, you start to see very quickly how it begins that become that bridge between what are going to be two worlds, the hybrid world of my on-premise legacy web applications with my web access management solutions, and now my cloud applications and potentially my identity as a service cloud provider where I shoved all my AD environment or all my users up into some cloud directory or cloud database. And now that's providing access to all of my SaaS applications because they offered a giant list of a thousand applications I could connect to with a single identity in the cloud. But that identity can't access any of my on-premise legacy applications, so now do I have my users running two different credentials going to two different places? 
with Radiant Logic, all that appears to be universal. We can even pull back the identities from the cloud and make them available to my legacy applications in case I have customers or users or vendors or partners that I have in my cloud directory that I don't want to create on-premise, but I need to give access to on-premise applications. So we're solving tons of problems here as we go through this particular scenario. So as in conclusion, and just to sort of wrap up around this again, and I'll just touch on these, these briefly, the, off, the move to Office 365 is, is probably the biggest initiative behind the, the demand or the requirement or the drive to consolidate your AD environments. People have done it in the past because having multiple AD domains was cumbersome and expensive. When you had mergers and acquisitions, you ended up with that model and you tried to move off onto it back to the simpler world you had when it was just one domain. But Office 365 has really kind of driven and asked you to solve that problem before you go to the cloud because it's one tenant for your organization in the cloud, so you should have one source feeding that. So Radiant Logic, as I hopefully have pointed out today, does a massively powerful and, and effective job of helping you move and prepare and get ready and make the transition up there and still maintain that one foot on the dock and one foot in the boat world of, of a hybrid environment. You're going to be on-premise, you're going to have a legacy. Even if you move your on-premise applications to Amazon and you host them in an Amazon domain servers and on Amazon directories and databases that are not on a premise uh, terrestrial data, or data center, those are still going to be one world to manage and your Azure Office 365 tenants going to be another world to manage. You need to be able to bridge the world between those. You need to be able to see everything from one pane of glass, but be able to give each endpoint exactly what it wants. And if you're moving identities in the cloud, whether it's Azure AD or into Amazon, you need to have the capability to build that golden image, clean everything up. You wouldn't make a move to a new home until you went through all your stuff and threw out and or delivered the goodwill and Salvation Army, all the things you didn't need, put your broken washing machine on the local Craigslist and get rid of it because you don't want to haul into the new pretty house all the old junk you had before. The stuff you had in your garage you've been talking about getting rid of, now's the time. Orphaned accounts, abandoned groups, unaudited resources, this is the time to go ahead and clean all that up. Let Radiant Logic help you do that. By being able to see what you have, you can make a change, you can affect that. And this is going to simplify the whole process of managing users and groups. As your world gets simpler, you can see everything in one place, you can build the world you want to have and not the one you inherited, then that all becomes much easier to do. And as you get more and more customer data requirements or you have to absorb an extended schema that someone got uh, done because of an application requirement, you can do that now with Radiant Launcher without affecting your native backend systems. And that's going to increase and maximize your ROI across all your applications. So I really want to appreciate everyone for hanging in. We just got to very much the top of the hour here. I don't have a time to go over the questions, but I do want to hit on two more things. We have another webinar on February 8th in this series. This is enabling optimal group management with Federated Identity Service. I touched on group management briefly today, but we'll get into much more deeply how your ability to consolidate and manage groups across multiple domains and across multiple identity sources, including databases, which don't even have a group concept, really add some powerful authentication or authorization capabilities that Radiant Logic can provide for you. And if you look on the right-hand side here, I know it's very small, but you will get a copy of the slides, and you can get this from our website. The URL is at the bottom there. That's a list of our trainings that we're giving out across the country uh, this year. Um, those trainings are an excellent way to get more information about Radiant Logic. They're a wonderful opportunity to actually sit down with one of our leading experts within the organization in our products and their hands-on training. You're not only learning about Radiant Logic, you're not only getting to see the the slides and the theory and the explanation of the product, but you are at the same time working in a live environment where you are building out a Radiant Logic integration with a directory and a database and building views and concatenating users and creating a mature, complete environment. Once you've got done with that training, you've pretty much gone through end to end what you would do in, in the initial deployment of Radiant Logic in your particular environment. So I highly recommend that you talk to your Radiant Logic account executive or your solutions architect, whoever you're working with, and see what you can do about getting training. We have advanced training if you've already been through our basic training. And this gives you an excellent opportunity to start learning about all the places Radiant Logic can have a benefit, all the use cases out there that I don't have time to talk about today that customers have used us for, the problems that we've solved. 
So continue to, to listen and, and dial in for our uh, webinar series to get more information as we'll broaden out the conversation. Take a look at the training. Contact your account executive with any questions. We'd be happy to answer them, and we look forward to being of value to you in the future. Thank you very much, and have a great rest of your day.